Hey everybody, Doug here. I wanted to do a video about ST2110. Uh, it's kind of a hot topic, especially since Blackmagic Design announced some new products here a week and a half ago from the time I'm filming this uh, that are focused around uh, 2110. And based on my interactions I had with people at NAB and in my Discord forums and whatnot, it seems like 2110 is, I wouldn't say misunderstood, it's just not known. People just don't really know what it is. And so I wanted to have kind of a, a frank discussion about what this technology is and maybe even a little bit about where it applies in our world so basically anybody who's watching this YouTube channel doing video production how this all works what it means for us where it's advantageous where it might not apply and so forth so I, but I may save more details about that subject for another video at some point in the future I want to mention I'm shooting this video in such a manner that I'm um, trying to get it out as quickly as possible. And so I'm, I'm going to try and avoid retakes, which means you may find more mistakes as I go. So just bear with me and uh, appreciate withholding criticism, <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, I do have some notes here in front of me, but it's just notes. It's not, gonna be, it's not an actual script. As usual, I am not using a script to produce this video. All right, so first of all, I should probably describe what... 2110 is and I say 2110 that actually means SMPTE ST2110 that's the full name for it and I'll just come right out and say that it is a collection of standards that have been produced by SMPTE which is Society for Motion Picture and Television Engineers which they've defined as a way to send video audio and related data across an IP network internet protocol network most, for most of us, that means an Ethernet network, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, but the idea is, instead of having a dedicated cable to go from device 1 to device 2, like SDI or HDMI or whatever, it's actually sent over networking. So plug in an Ethernet cable from one device to another, or a fiber cable, or whatever the case may be. And so what they've done is they've defined standards on how that data is organized, uh, how devices should advertise their services, how devices can subscribe to those services, those kinds of things. Uh, and, and when I say it's a collection of standards, I mean that there are actually a bunch. Right now they have nine listed on their website. Simpty has nine listed on their website. And I'm sure there will be more. They've, they've added to them over the years. They've made changes even fairly recently to what 2110 is. And I'm, I'm just going to touch briefly on what some of those are because uh, it kind of pays to know that but it's not a requirement to know that in, in order to use it so uh, but for anybody who's familiar with some other networking technologies that, that are out there when it comes to AV related things NDI Dante there are a lot of similar concepts there definitely a lot of differences but there are some similar concepts there so if you're familiar with any of those things that kind of gives you a leg up in understanding what 2110 is all about. I have a video here on my channel talking about Dante, what it is, how you can take advantage of it, etc. So if you want kind of a primer on how a similar sort of technology works in, in terms of audio, go and watch that video. Uh, it's pretty comprehensive and describes a lot of what's going on. And you'll find a lot of parallels, a lot of similarities between that and 2110. So I mentioned that it's a, a collection of standards. Um, so I'm just going to hit these very quickly. So 2110-10 is a standard for defining the system overall and timing. Uh, part of that, part of having uh, ST2110 setup is having a master clock, called the Grandmaster, uses a protocol called PTP or Precision Time Pr Protocol version 2. And all devices that are on the network will use a common timing uh, source for all the video which ultimately means that all video format or all video on a network that's of similar similar format so so for example 1080p at 59.94 frames per second they will all use the same timing source and they will all be in sync with one another and how that is accomplished is uh, defined in 2110-10 so uh, understanding that everything is in sync uh, helps you to kind of understand and appreciate some of the complexity of setting up a 2110 network a little bit and understanding understanding why at times there is latency in some of the setups that we might not necessarily have latency in an SDI or HDMI configuration. 
So it's, again, it's 2110-10 that kind of defines how all that timing works. Then we move on to 2110-20, and that's how uncompressed video is converted from something like SDI or HDMI, whatever, whatever the source is, to something that can travel over a network. And 2110 is designed to be similar to SDI in the way that it organizes video. Uh, it's uncompressed, uh, it uses uh, YCRCB, and it's 422 by default. Uh, so a lot of similarities there. Those aren't the only ways of doing it, but that's kind of the default standard. That's what most devices are going to be using. And so 2110-20 defines how that works, how the picture data from your source come or gets organized into IP packets. And then we move on to uh, the format 2110, or standard, I should say, 2110-21, which is uh, for designed for video stream packet shaping, which in practical terms means defining how that data is timed and sent over the network. So when to send packets and how to handle uh, making sure that not too much data is going out all at the same time and clogging the network. So it's 2110-21 that handles that. And we can, from there we can move on to 2110-22. This is a pretty brand, pretty much brand new standard. And it's, it's a way of creating co constant bitrate compressed video. So there actually is a compressed standard as part of 2110. Again, this is new. So if you go back and watch old videos, they, there may be no mention of compressed video. It's because it hasn't, hasn't existed in the past. It's pretty pretty recent addition to the standard. Uh, it's constant bit rate and allows you to reduce the amount of data that has to be sent in order to send a video stream across the network. Uh, I would mention right now that the Blackmagic IP10 protocol that was announced as part of their product announcement uh, back last week uh, does not use a 2110-22. They've defined their own standard for that and I'll get into what that means here in a little bit towards the end of this video. Okay, the next one I want to mention is 2110-23. This is actually a pretty new new one as well. This is a standard that allows you to take a single video stream and, and divide it up into multiple streams that are derived from that master stream. So one example of that might be you've got your master stream, which is running in 4K at 60 frames per second, but you want to have another version that's 1080p at 60 frames per second. So the standard defines how you basically create that auxiliary stream from the, the primary stream there. Uh, next one I want to mention is 2110-30. This is how to send uncompressed audio over a network. Um, uncompressed meaning it's the original raw data, bit for bit, no compression, um, etc. And this is actually pretty similar to AES-67, which again I've mentioned uh, and talked about in my Dante video. Uh, it's not an exact copy of AES-67, but it's pretty similar. And converting between the two formats is actually pretty simple. Uh, just need some hardware or software it's specifically designed to do that, uh, to make that move back and forth. 2110-31 defines how AES-3 audio is formatted and sent over the network. And then 2110-40 defines how ancillary data is sent over the network. And for those of us in the Blackmagic world, that usually means things like tally and camera control. So the 2110-40 would be the standard that defines how that data would be organized before it's sent out, sent out over a network. In addition to the 2110, there are some other standards that are kind of a part of this as well and related. Uh, I won't necessarily get into details on those, but we've got 2022-6, which is a definition for high bitrate media over IP, how signals are combined specifically. 2022-7 is uh, defining how stream redundancy is set up, so if you need some, uh, some protection, some actual... Um, basically a backup, uh, 2022-7 defines how that's done. And then 2022-8 uh, describes a way to synchronize video streams. So those are related, but not directly part of 2110. And as, when I, speaking of standards, there's two more that I wanted to mention here before I kind of get into what it takes to set up 2110. Uh, and this is kind of important. So 2110 defines how the, how the data, so video, audio, whatever, gets from one device to another but in and of itself doesn't define how devices establish those that communication, those links uh, between them. And for that, we need a couple other protocols. There's two protocols that are that are used for that and for basically setting up what the resolutions and frame rates and so forth of the different streams are. And we have STP, Session Description Protocol, 
uh, which is for all the metadata associated with like this this video stream is 1080p at 59.94 frames per second then we have nmos which is stands for the networked media open specifications and nmos protocols there are three specifically involved nmos is-04 which is for device discovery nmos is-05 for connection management and nmos is-07 for resource registration and all those combined are used to provide a way to establish that those routes from source device to destination device so it's those protocols that handle that uh, but all that said you don't need to know any of those standards in order to use any of this stuff the the only one that you might actually see any reference to when you're using any of this stuff would probably be nmos and it's nmos that uh, does all your signal routing for you and in, specifically in the case of black magic the stuff that they announced a little while, a little while ago uh, they're putting and they're adding nmos support into some of their video routing products as well as their ethernet switch and so when you need to say I want the signal from camera one to go to input one of my switcher. You're, you'll be using NMOS protocol to do that. So you'll be using a device or software that supports NMOS, and that's used to create those routes. Basically, each device advertises what it has to offer. So I have these four video streams. I have these 12 audio streams. I have closed captioning, whatever. They, they use NMOS to advertise that, and then an NMOS server... <laughs> Uh, listens for that, keeps track of it, and then once somebody wants to make a route between a source and destination, NMOS issues the commands uh, in order to facilitate that and make that happen. So, um, the next thing I probably wanted to cover is sort of how that data is sent over a network and sort of what the requirements are for, to, in order to make this work. Uh, you do have to have a couple of uh, very specific things available on your network first of all you have to have enough bandwidth since this is uncompressed video you're talking about streams of data that are can be significantly large for example 1080p at 59.94 frames per second in the sdi world is three gigabits per second so a one gigabit network is not going to get you anything in terms of uh in, in terms of 2110 getting any sort of video uh, sent across a network whatsoever you need to have faster networks than that so kind of the base requirement in terms of speed is going to be 10 gigabit so any device that's being used as part of a 2110 deployment needs to have 10 gigabit networking as standard as your base uh, there are going to be opportunities where you're going to want to be higher than that so we're seeing devices that have 100 gigabit that are kind of coming down in price and entering this space a little bit specifically some of the black magic stuff that was announced does have uh, some 100 gigabit ports on it and that's basically going to be essential and when you start dealing with a larger scale deployment where you've got more than a handful of devices uh, but yes yeah, so you always have to have enough bandwidth for whatever video or audio you're going to be sending uh, as mentioned three gigabits will get you a 1080p stream at 60 frames per second if you need to do 4k uh, if you're doing tw uh, 24 25 30 frames per second that means you're going to be up in the six gigabit neighborhood and then for 50 to 60 frames per second in 4k that data rate is 8, 10, 12 gigabit. And so something had to be done in order to fit a 4K stream onto, 4K 60 stream onto a 10 gigabit network. And that's why Blackmagic had introduced IP10. And again, I'll talk about that more in a little bit. So but you have to have enough bandwidth for any of the video sources that are on your network. But that said, 10 gigabit is more bandwidth than you need for a single 1080p stream so you can have multiple streams go over a single connection in the case of 1080p at 60 frames per second since it's a little less than three gigabits per second you can do three of those simultaneously over a single network connection and that's only going in one direction because all of our networks these days are what we call full duplex and can communicate in both directions simultaneously without interfering from with one another that usually means that you can have three uh, video streams being sent and three video streams received over a single 10 gigabit connection logically follows that if you have a 4k stream and it's taking near 10 gigabits per second under the compressed format that black magic has announced you're only going to get one of those on a single 10 gigabit network link so simple math you just multiply the number of streams by the uh, bandwidth required for each one and that gives you the total bandwidth that's required in order to send those 
that number of streams over a single network link. So uh, there's that. Now, in addition to that, there's a few other requirements you have to have as well. Uh, so every ST2110 network has to have a PTP timing source, a PTP version 2 specifically. We call that the Grandmaster, and that provides all this timing information for all of the devices that are on the network. PTP's precision time protocol, and this has very accurate timing. So in addition to having PTP on your network, you also should be ideally looking at switches that support something, uh, well, they have to be PTP aware, which is not just prioritizing those packets so they get sent out early, it's actually modifying the data in those part of those packets, uh, we call that a transparent clock, uh, and modifying that data to reflect the amount of time that it takes for the signal to, to pass through the Ethernet switch. So, you know, if it comes in a timing that's, say, 10 microseconds or whatever, um, that, then it takes an additional 3 microseconds to, to flow through the switch. The output timing that comes from the switch is going to be 13 microseconds, or however, whatever, however that breaks down. So basically, the, the switch is aware that PTP is traveling on the network, and it knows to grab the timestamp when that data is received, modify it when it's sent so that the devices receiving have an accurate time for when that data is being uh, transmitted to them. So that's not a hard fast requirement, but it certainly makes things work better when you do have a PTP aware switch. Uh, on top of that, you also have to support IGMP version 3 uh, in that group message protocol. That's a protocol that allows devices to use multicasting in order to send video out over a network. And essentially what multicasting allows you to do, say you've got, you've got your video switcher that's outputting a signal, and you've got five devices that want to have a copy of that. If you, with, when, when you have multicasting, the switches, network switches that are involved in your network, intelligently are able to forward that data on to those five devices without having to make five copies of it, and similarly not forward that data on to devices that have not requested it. And so it's IGMP that allows that to happen. And so having a, a switch that supports IGMP version 3 is basically a must in terms of doing a 2110 video. Okay, all right, um, let's see what else. So okay, I guess maybe we should talk about a little bit about what the advantages of uh, 2110 are over, say, HDMI or SDI, specifically SDI, because that's what 2110 is designed to be a uh, replacement for, eventual replacement for. Uh, the biggest one is flexibility. So with your more traditional video connections, one cable is routed from device A to device B, and it carries one signal. With uh, 2110, that's no longer true. You have a lot of flexibility in terms of what is sent over each particular link. And if you've got enough, enough bandwidth, you can send multiple connections over a single link. Uh, so you can have a lot more efficient cabling in terms of the devices, in terms of video signals that are traveling through, through your network. Um, this also means having all this be based on IP networking, you also get flexibility in that we're not locked into specific video resolutions and frame rates like we typically have been in the past. You know, in the computer world, we're used to be able to, being able to plug in a, in a monitor of some obscure resolution and the computer just accepts it and works with it. That's not been the case with video, you know. For example, we're, we're, we've been tied to uh, 720p, 1080i, 1080p, uh, UHD, um, and, you know, 3840 by 2160. And those are kind of hard, fast rules in terms of the formats that we're available to use for video production. 2110 gives some flexibility in that, in terms of that. So, you know, if somebody wants to say, "Hey, we're going to do a new frame rate that's uh, uh, we're going to do 2160p at 96 frames per second." Uh, you can you could do that so uh, because the devices aren't locked to specific rates, which means that this is a lot more future proof than some of the other things that we've worked with in the past. Uh, another advantage is that because it's IP based, uh, we can consolidate a lot of the equipment that is used to manage all of that with network infrastructure as part of a business facility, whatever. And you don't have to have duplicates. So, you know, traditionally, like for example, here in my trailer, I, I have networking switches and I have video routing switchers. With 2110, you could have single devices that handle both of those functions. And so you're not duplicating equipment quite so much. Uh, each piece of equipment might be a little more expensive than the versions we've used in the past, but you're also getting them to do dual duty. So there may be some advantages there in terms of cost as well. Uh, 
the networking, when you, a specific, I should mention also specifically with fiber, uh, when you're dealing, dealing with fiber, 2110 can be quite a bit less expensive than your more traditional uh, SMPTE based fiber solutions like SDI, because the SFPs, F S F SFP modules are, are a lot less expensive for networking than they are for video production. So, and then the, the last, other last advantage that I wanted to mention is that 2110 can be a lot easier to use for remote links. You know, if you've got video production happening across two different facilities simultaneously, 2110 can be used to link those two, and it's a lot easier to do than anything else that we've had in the past. So it's, it's the video is being sent over IP natively, which is you know internet protocol. So. It can be sent over the internet with with uh, with ease, and that's a big advantage compared to what we've traditionally used in the past. All right, um, let me get kind of more into some of the nitty gritty about what's going on uh, with with the data that's being sent over the network. So with twenty one ten, every video or audio or whatever type of source um, is called an essence. So if you've got, say, for example, a camera, and you got the camera has two channels of audio, it's got a couple of microphones. The audio would be an essence and the video would be an essence. And each of those things are advertised over the network and the camera basically says, I have this video that's available, available, I have this audio that's available. And then once that's been advertised, uh, any, any devices on the network can uh, basically ask to receive a copy of that, subscribe to it is one way we could say that. And the nice thing is that those, each essence uh, can be independent. And if I say, for example, you want the video from the camera to your switcher, but you're not going to be using the audio from that camera, you don't have to subscribe to that. It, it could just be ignored, more or less. Similarly, if you've got a roving wireless microphone that's uh, somewhere near that camera, but it didn't go through the camera, that audio source could be an essence of its, in and of itself. And then when you bring all that into your 2110 network, your receiving device could subscribe to the video from the camera and then subscribe to the audio from that wireless microphone separately and sort of combine them as if as almost almost as if they're one particular source if that's the application that you're you're wanting to pull off uh, and because this is a publish subscribe like model any number of devices can, can subscribe to any one of those those sources uh, so a lot of flexibility there that we have not traditionally had in the past. You know, with SDI, we've had to use embedders or de-embedders in order to get audio in or out of the signal. With 2110, that's just not a thing. You know, once a device publishes that separate audio and video, anything on the network can grab a copy of that independent of what else that source device offers. So you get some flexibility there. And again, that is called an essence. So as you're in discussions with other people talking about 2110, you don't necessarily you wouldn't necessarily call it a stream you would call it an essence and that's sort of the official terminology that's used for that okay all right so um let's uh, sort of go over a little bit about how this is similar to or different than some of the other technologies that people might already be familiar with first one that this one gets compared to that 2110 gets compared to all the time is ndi and ND, anyone not familiar with that ndi is a, a way of sending video over uh, network. It was introduced by NewTek, now owned by Vizert. Uh, it's designed to be a little bit lower end than the 2110. So 2110 is really designed to be used for huge, uh, big scale operations. You find some, a handful of big broadcast trucks are using, embracing 2110. And you're finding some of the big television networks, at least at the high, high end, you know, the head, headquarters kind of thing, are embracing 2110. If at that scale, it's easier to move that data around in 2110 than it would be something else. And DI on the flip side is more about two, three, four cameras, you know, on a small network uh, with a single video switcher, that, that sort of setup. It's a lot more at home in that environment. And as such, it wasn't designed to be a part of such large infrastructure and be part of such large deployments. Um, there are Definitely some similar concepts between the two. You know, for example, the ability to advertise and subscribe to a video source. That's a part of both of those things. But the way that these the two are handled is, is pretty different. For example, NDI is always compressed. 2110 is almost never compressed. Uh, the, the, the desire to have high quality uh, video is part of the 
inherent design of 2110, whereas NDI was a lot more focused on keeping the total bandwidth down. So diff very different approaches there. So uh, while, while there are some similarities, they actually are quite different. Uh, the other thing is that 2110 is an official SMPTE standard, and it's available for anybody to use at no cost. So you just have to read the documentation, um, which they make available to anybody. There's a fee, fee to buy it, but it's available to anybody, so anybody who wants to implement 2110 is free to do so. And the AI on the flip side is controlled by Vizzert, and you are paying license fees to do so, and a royalty fee for each device that uses uh, NDI as well. So radically different approaches. So NDI is owned by Vizzert. They control it. SMPTE has defined 2110, but anybody is free to use it. But you don't have to get their permission, basically. Uh, in terms of how 2110 is similar to Dante, again, a lot of similar concepts there. Uh, Dante, well, Dante now has AV, but traditional, traditional Dante is audio only. But, but it's a very similar sort of thing where devices can basically say, I have these 12 audio sources, I can receive 12 audio sources to go to this destination. So a lot of similarities there. Uh, again, the big difference between these two is that Dante is owned by Audinate. They control it. You pay, you pay for their hardware in order to incorporate into your product, whereas SMPTE 2110 or ST2110, anybody is free to use that. So it's a very different approach to how those things are handled. So... Um, now, specifically in terms of Blackmagic, Blackmagic Design introduced a whole slew of new products for, uh, an announcement video that they published, was that April 12th, I think, of this year. And they are kind of all in on 2110 moving forward. That seems pretty obvious. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more products moving forward, but they've introduced quite a few to this point. They are, for the most part, embracing existing standards where they can, but they're also taking an approach of trying to make it more approachable and easier to set up than, they, than 20, 2110 typically has been in the past. Uh, the learning curve to get into 2110 if you're outside the Black, Blackmagic world is kind of steep. You have to understand a lot, of, a lot of networking type concepts in order to make that all work. Blackmagic is trying to solve that and make it really easy where it's as simple as plugging two devices together and it just kind of works. They're handling a lot of the configuration things behind the scenes for you, specifically if you get their Ethernet switch, as it has all the required protocols to make 2110 work reliably already set up out of the box. So it's literally a plug and play. And in addition to that, that device also has um, a panel on the front for doing the video and audio routing as part of your 2110 network. So they're trying to eliminate most of the pain points that are there. And the other thing that they've done uh, along those lines is offer compression for the video formats, specifically 2110, or sorry, 2160p at 50 and 60 frames per second. Uh, they offer very slight reduction uh, in the data rates through light compression in order to make those signals fit into a 10 gigabit network. Uh, they've published those standards or in the process of publishing those standards for anybody else to use. The jury is still out on whether anybody else is going to embrace that or not. Time will tell. We just don't know. Um, but uh, it's nice that they've got all that stuff reconfigured. So you literally like put their Ethernet switch in, a, in your equipment rack, plug in a cable from there to one of their cameras that has 2110 built in or one of their converters, and it just works. It just goes. So you don't have to worry about configuring anything. It just is all set up on its own. Um, so that handles the setting up the precision time protocol server, uh, sets up uh, IGMP, snooping, etc. Uh, in order to make all of that work. Uh, but the other thing I was mentioned though is that they are taking a bit of a different approach whereas 2110 is usually about having everything go through common networking infrastructure equipment. Blackmagic is also, on top of that, adding the ability for a lot of this stuff to be point-to-point. -point. So you've got the output of your camera going directly into a converter that converts it to SDI. And it doesn't go through a switch anywhere, which is, that's very different than what we have traditionally seen with 2110. There's nothing in the rules to say you can't do that, but it's kind of counter to the design philosophy that most uh, people implementing 2110 have. So... They're, they're doing it as kind of a future-proofing and cost-saving measure uh, more than anything else. And it, that means that they're approaching this a little bit differently than others. But again, as long as you are not doing 
2160p at 50 or 60 frames per second, their stuff should be compatible with the other 2110 equipment and implementations that are out there. So sticking to standards where they can and then creating new open standards for anybody else to use where they can't. So uh, a slightly different approach there. Um, now with that said, one of the most common questions that I got um, at NAB was, are you going to be embracing 2110 for specifically my trailer setup here? And I don't know that I have an answer for that just yet. There are some certainly some things that are compelling about that, but there's also uh, some sacrifices that I would have to make in order to in order to do that. And that's on top of any costs to get replacement equipment for things that I'm doing. So for anybody who's not familiar, I do use fiber uh, to get video between my trailer and a venue where the cameras are located. And that's been the more traditional set SDI over fiber approach. Uh, it's what we've, similar and compatible to what we've traditionally called simply fiber in the past. And that's allowed me to do some event, a lot of events that nobody else can because I'm doing fiber rather than copper cables. But if I was to go to 2110, I would be replacing all of that equipment. So I'd have to have a compelling reason to do so. And right now, I don't know if there is. I also have a handful of concerns about Blackmagic's implementation. After talking to some of the people that were actually involved in the design of these products at NAB, uh, it seems that latency in particular is going to be a bit of an issue with this. And they have not necessarily taken an approach of trying to minimize latency. They seem to be focused on other aspects of this, compatibility, uh, ease of setup, right, are there higher priorities than the latency side of things. And it seems like for most of their products, the latency is going to be at least two frames. Uh, and in addition to that, it's all brand new. Uh, I per did purchase a couple of their 2110 uh, SDI converter boxes they announced last year and played them for a while, and it became apparent pretty quickly that that was not a solution that was going to bring me any benefit, and so I turned around and sold them. Um, I did shoot a video about it, about them, but I never actually released it. So the jury's still out very much so on, on whether there's going to be any practical benefit for me and whether financially it would make any sense for me to do so. Uh, at, at best... Uh, it would be adding the ability for me to do, to do 4K live streaming easier than what I do now. Uh, but on top of that, it could make the additional latency and it uh, could make some of the iMag situations that I do, for example, impractical. Uh, or the cost might be just much too prohibitive with the number of cameras and other equipment that I have going on. So, short answer, I don't know. So, anyway... Um, Let's see. Anything else that I need to cover? Oh, I didn't really cover the disadvantage of 2110. Um, so compared to SDI or HDMI, let me just go through this quickly. Um, 2110 can be a lot more uh, complicated to set up because you have all that networking stuff you got to worry about. It's not just plug in cable A to, to uh, from device A to, to device B, and you're done. There's very often going to be more configuration than that. Uh, it can be can be more expensive you know the networking equipment that does 10 gigabit at the scale you need is not necessarily cheap particularly when you have to have one that supports PDP and IGMP version 3 IGMP, IGMP version 3 is easy to find PDP uh, aware switches are not cheap they're kind of hard to find uh, hopefully that changes with time um, the latency does con does con uh, potentially become a disadvantage um, just let me cover that a little bit very briefly so, because everything on 2110 network of a single video format is synchronized, that means if you're dealing with, say for example, a camera that does not sync to that master timing signal, then there's going to be a delay just getting the video onto the network in the first place. So there's that. And then at the receiving end, um, most devices are doing some buffering before they out take the video that's coming in IP and outputting it via SDI or, H or HDMI or whatever, just in case there is packet loss or packets received out of order, or whatever. It needs some time to reassemble that and make sure it has a whole video frame before it can, can pass that on. So a lot of devices are adding 
basically a frame of latency at the end to, to allow that buffering to take place. And then on top of that, if you're going into a, say for example, a video switcher that's not part of your 2110 network, it's using SDI or HDMI or whatever, it's going to have its own synchronization on top of all of that. And so you're getting another one to maybe two frames of, of latency there. So from light going in the front of the camera to coming out the output on your switcher, you could easily be in the neighborhood of eight to 10 frames. And that's a lot, that's an awful lot. And that's one of the big disadvantages of this. If you're dealing with equipment that doesn't support gen locking or isn't supporting IP20 or ST2110 natively, there could be a lot of additional latency that comes into play there. Uh, the other, another big advantage is like if you if you do want decide you want to embrace 2110, that may require replacement of a lot of equipment. You may be replacing a lot of your stuff in order to embrace that, particularly if you want to do it in the most optimal, supported, intended way. So there is that. Uh, and as a result of all of that, I would say that 2110 is not necessarily suited to the smaller implementations, the installations that the viewers of my channel here are typically involved with. So as of right now, that can be a difficult switch to make uh, going from the older style workflow to 2110 based uh, Ultimately, I do think that, that 2110 is where everything is headed. Uh, however, we really need for some of the cost costs to come down, and we need for some of the little quirks to be worked out and fixed, particularly things like latency. You know, There's no inherent reason that devices have to have long latency, two, three frames, but the current implementations tend to be doing that. Uh, but along those lines, I, I, want, I did want to make mention of one thing. Like when I was at, at NAB earlier this week, I was playing with some of the Blackmagic equipment that they had there. And they had a camera that had the 2110 firmware in it, and they had that output of that camera going into a uh, routing switcher, which was then displayed, they, then routed to a monitor, which was 2110. And in that configuration, because all the devices were 2110, the latency was, was minimal. It was very, very low, because the camera was able to sync, the monitor was able to sync to that timing master and in those situations the latency was was very low I, I can move the camera back and forth and it was almost instantaneous on the monitor seeing those same movements so when configured right you can have low latency but if you're dealing with a hybrid environment where you've got SDI and HDMI in addition to 2110 you've got devices that are not native 2110 the latency could be a real killer so take that for what it's worth Anyway, um, I know you guys are going to have questions about this. Uh, please feel free to ask those here in the comments. But I want to try and direct most of the conversation around this over to my Discord channel. So you see a link to that pos popping up here on your screen. So ggp.ly slash Discord. And I will have a channel in there that's specifically designed for talking about 2110, SD2110. Uh, I know this is a new concept to most everybody. Uh, so... I know there's going to be questions, and I'm happy to answer the ones that I can. At the same time, I can't necessarily consider myself a 2110 expert either. So I will do my best. And the, I know there are people on those forums that know more about this stuff than I do, and they're very often happy to answer questions as well. If you are in the video production world and you're looking for a software solution to help you run your business, every aspect of your business, hiring your crew, keeping track of your equipment, planning your events, communicating with your crew and clients, doing your invoicing, your billing, all of that kind of stuff. I have a website, it's on my shirt there, crewaccess.com, that I created uh, for running my own company several years ago. My day job is in software. This is not something that came out of the blue. Uh, I created this website for my own use a few years ago, and after some people who are in the business saw it, they were impressed by it, and they said, you ought to sell this for others, and so I've done that. So a few years ago, I modified the site where it supports multiple different clients and it is available. I even have a free plan which people can use for as long as they want. Uh, some limitations in terms of how much of the different types of things you can put in there, but otherwise unlimited in terms of how long you can use it. So please take a few minutes to go check that out and there's a link uh, to that in the description and on your screen there as well. So 
Anyway, I think that's going to about do it. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and have a fantastic day.